Hello everybody! I am going to make a video today. Uh, I might make another one later on, but I wanted to make this one hopefully short. Um, I know I've been terrible about getting back to my video making. It's I've had a lot of other stuff going on. Um, really cool stuff. Been been busy. Work's been busy, but um, that's awesome. Uh, today, though, I want to present a couple of papers. I found these uh, Dr. Christine Janis uh, on a discussion group I was reading. Um, she brought these papers up, and I hadn't heard of them before, so I, I managed to obtain them, and, and they're, they're great. I think that um, these papers, and I'm going to explain why here, it's going to be a little bit wordy. Um, these papers, especially these first two, are the scientific publication equivalent of, I don't know, catching them, if you just happen to be turning on your television and saw a movie preview where, I don't know, the doctor hooks up with Captain Kirk and Superman to stop the shadow sentience from destroying Babylon 5. It's that kind of awesomeness. Um, anyway, so this paper is, uh, these are by uh, Phil Center. He's a, uh, a paleontologist. And now I'm going to, I'm just going to take a little bit of background to make some sense out of these. Uh, well, for me to explain why I think they're so cool. A um, little bit of background. Uh, so you guys may have, some of you may, if you've been around the creation discussions and such, um, may have heard of something called baraminology. Now, some people, I guess, take a really negative attitude towards it, and I don't have a positive attitude towards it myself. Um, but what this is, is this is an attempt by creation scientists to legitimize their, their system by using the words of science. And I don't think this should be discouraged. Um, some people have said, well, they're just playing scientists, that it's just the sort of a academic equivalent of wearing a lab coat or a uh, safari outfit and pretending to be something you're not. And in some ways, that's an accurate assessment. But what I like about it is, is that if they start using the language and tools of science, um, then they open themselves up for scientific criticism. Um, and I think they should be applauded for the effort even if they're not quite succeeding, um, you know, and maybe they will succeed. And I don't mean succeed in proving their point. Their point is is not provable. Um, but they will, if by succeeding in presenting stuff in such a way that by showing it to be incorrect, we actually learn something. And, you know, and that's how science actually benefits from criticism, real criticism. And I don't mean, you know, Kent Hovind style criticism, but by the more scientific that the creationists present themselves, the actual greater contribution they can make to the science of of, of, of biology. That's and I think that 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 should be somewhat applauded. Um, so this baraminology, what this is, is you know, the concept that creationists have used a lot that you know there were kinds. God created a set number of kinds or a certain number of kinds, and then those subsequently diversified and and to all of the life we have on Earth now, or at least all of the life that survived the global flood. And and that's, you know, it's an interesting concept, but if you've probably seen, they use it really, really, sli it, a very slippery way. A kind can be as large as a phylum, it can be as small as a subspecies, depending on how it applies. Um, the same rules that define horse kind obviously don't apply to hominin kind, because if they did, Chimpanzees and humans would be one kind by their by the definitions that they present, if that makes sense. Um, but so what? What this is this is why this is so great here. So what they did was um, what Phil Center and crew did is they took the methodology of this baraminology, which which there's a number of papers that have been published in in their in I mean quote peer reviewed journal, the Creation Journals, um, which is again pretending to be science by pretending peer review, playing, using the language of science. And they presented a series of papers on how to define a kind, which is about, it's like, to me, it's about fucking time, right? Define this word, you use it all the time, define it. And so they developed a computer analysis program that's kind of analogous to the one that tax, real taxonomists use by looking at a series of morphological characteristics, analyzing those, basically looking for distance, how much things have diverged, and saying, okay, all the living horses, you know, zebras, donkeys, everything, are a kind, 
based on this analysis. It's like, okay, that's fair enough, right? So they've defined kind in that context to a genus, and in some cases to a family level. Um, like they, I think they've figured out, in, in using this analysis, that all cats, felidae, are all actually one kind, um, which is a little bit odd, but that's okay. Um, so what this author did, what Phil Center did, is he took and he treated the methodology of barominologists. He treated their technique, used their programs, used all of their characteristics, and, contrary to what creationists often make the accusation, assumed that this kind, this fundamental kind, was a created entity, created by God, poofed into existence. And, and so, he, no, sorry, he assumed that the creation model was correct in his analysis, all right? Now, obviously, he doesn't believe that it's correct, but he assumed its correctness. He assumed that their methods were sound. He assumed everything. He used all of their techniques. And as he as he puts it, because therefore, they can't argue against his method. They can't claim, well, that's an evolutionary bias, or that's looking at it not through biblical glasses, or all the other accusations that are sometimes thrown out. And in his first paper here, is using creation science to demonstrate the evolution to... Oh, this is... Wrong one, huh? Sorry. Using creation science to demonstrate evolution, application of a creationist method for visualizing gaps in the fossil record to a phylogenetic study of coelosaurian dinosaurs. Um, so essentially, what he did was, they took, he took the, the what we basically call theropods, um, you know, everything from Velociraptor, Tyrannosaurus rex, and birds, and he performed the barominological analysis on them that the creationists used based on their citing their papers, citing their studies, using their computer techniques and everything else. And using that showed that um, at least the theropod dinosaurs and birds all represent a single created kind. So whether or not evolution is false or true or whatever, all of, by the creationist standards, they should consider all of the basically bipedal carnivorous dinosaurs to be a single kind. Everything from a hummingbird to a Tyrannosaurus rex all represent a single created kind by this analysis. Now, of course, obviously, this supports traditional um, evolutionary phylogeny that they all have a common ancestor because they, I mean, they all have morphological characteristics because they do have a common ancestor. But essentially, what it is is it's consilience between the creationist model and the evolutionary model that birds and dinosaurs, at least birds and this group of dinosaurs, all have a common origin, um, whether or not they believe you believe it evolved through natural selection, or whether you believe that it, you know, God created it six thousand years ago. Um, and it, to me, this is so beautiful um, because, as I, like like the author states, uh, if they find flaw with this paper, if they reject this paper, then they reject their techniques. That's that's what they have to do because he used them to the letter. He followed their methods and their standards and their definitions to the letter um, in coming up with this. Or they have to admit that um, dinosaurs and uh, birds are part of the same kind, the same barrowman, whatever, that some proto bird dinosaur got off the ark, which of course is in contradiction with the fact that I think birds were created a day earlier than dinosaurs were um, by the Genesis record. Not that it mentions dinosaurs, but land-dwelling animals. So that was cool. And then the second paper, this is when I started reading off the first, I apologize, using creation science to demonstrate evolution too, morphological continuity within the dinosauria. What they do here is they take all of the dinosaurs and their Relatives, the you know, different group outgroups, um, basically uh, these these diapsid relatives of of dinosaurs, and um, show that they there's no barrier in between them. That means that if you go to the base of the theropod lineage and the sauropod lineage, you find a continuity of kind once again. So, which again demonstrates that all the dinosaurs represent a single created kind, um, with a few exceptions. There were a few groups that he couldn't root, um, but then within those groups, like I think the Ceratopsians, he couldn't he couldn't anchor them to the rest of the dinosaur kind. Um, but he found that within the Ceratopsians, despite this wide variety, that there was a, a they all kind of converge as a single kind, um, which I don't think creationists would even argue that one, but. 
they would argue certainly that, you know, hadrosaurs and theropods and sauropods all have a common ancestor, which is what this paper would show, um, and that common ancestor was 6,000 years ago, which is a little bit um, pretty amazing in my opinion. Um, but that's, you've always known, the, with, the, with the kind concept, it doesn't get them out of the water because it involves a level of speciation and evolution, microevolution if they want to call it that, that's never been seen since orders and orders of magnitude faster than anything any evolutionist has ever predicted would happen. Um, anyway, so I thought that was pretty cool. And then there's uh, this paper, which I haven't finished reading yet. Um, I'm going to read through it, and I'll, um, I don't know if I'll present it or not, but I'll, at the very least I'll, I'll put a link up to it. I think all of these are available for free, so you can get them yourselves and read them and cherish them as much as I have. But this is uh, a nut paper by the same author, Phil Center, but he's using um, the rules and analysis by flood scientific flood geology to prove that the flood was impossible, which I think is another awesome attempt. And I want to, I think that this kind of effort, I, I don't want to say pretending, taking the creation scientist, the modern creation science movement at its word, right, that we're doing science, we're just doing, you know, non-assumptive science or whatever they want to claim, that they're not assuming millions of years or whatever, all of their things, and saying, okay, fine. All right, we'll use your techniques, we'll use your methods and show that you're still incorrect. You're still, by all of those things, because they can always, no matter what, you take a line of fossils that show a gradual transition from one kind, if you want to call it that, to another kind, which we have abundant examples of, especially with the invertebrates, and you show that to a creationist, they don't say, oh, you know what, you're, you're probably correct. What they say is, that's your evolutionary assumption. You say, well, this one is a million years after this one, and that's a million years after this one, or whatever. They say, well, those millions of years are your assumption. Uh, Dr. Center took the creationist assumptions as fact. He started with their assumptions and then showed that, well, they're incorrect. And I think that's that's a beautiful thing. So anyway, I'm going to end this now. Uh, I'll uh, try maybe make another video later on. I'm not sure if I'm going to have time. i got a bunch of shit to do. So, all right, everybody, take care.